rude mechanic belittles me, but it turns out my new best friend is his boss's boss. Okay, so in January 2018, my best friend, his girlfriend and I all went out. We took my car, but I got drunk, so my best friend drove us home. As we were approaching a roundabout, a driver from a side street pulled out in front of us, then slammed on their brakes, causing my best friend to swerve and hit the concrete median with both drivers' side tires. We parked the car in the parking lot and Ubered home. Next day, I had the car towed to my personal mechanic's shop. The insurance guy assesses the damage and my mechanic gets to work. He does everything he thought it needed, put it on the alignment rack, found out that the engine cradle had been bent in the impact and it needed a new one. Now, he didn't have the capability to do this, so they sent my car to a different company. Let's just call that one ABC Repair. ABC Repair outsourced the engine cradle replacement to what we'll call the Dillweed Shop, aka DS. The car goes to the new shop and takes forever because the first cradle they got was bent, so they had to order another one from California. The guy ordered the wrong parts originally. The dude gets the cradle in on the day my rental coverage expires. As a single dad, I needed my car. Also, this whole time, the manager of ABC Repair Shop was not keeping me up to date on any of this. They were dodging my calls, and any time I did get him, he was rude to me. So the guy busts rear to get it in that day, test drove, and returned it to ABC Repair right before closing time, where I was waiting to pick it up. DS gave it a clean bill of health and handed over the keys. And here's where the rude crap really begins. So the minute I left ABC shop that night, there was just something wrong with the car. Since I have a bit of auto mechanic experience, I assumed it was a wheel bearing. Next morning, I call my insurance adjuster who tells me to take it back to DS and see what's up. So I call him up and say, hi, it's the dude with the engine cradle job. Uh, I think there's something wrong with one of the bearings. And he says, yeah, I knew about that. Um, so why did you give it a clean bill of health? I was being rushed to return it, so I just said it was fine. It wasn't critical, so what's the big deal? Um, okay. Well, this needs to be fixed. Are you sure you know exactly what's wrong? 100%, right rear wheel bearing. Okay, I'll call adjuster and get it approved for repair. I have no more rental coverage, but I'm going out of town this weekend, and I won't need my car Thursday through Sunday, so I can drop it off then. Does that work? Sure, no problem. See you Thursday morning. DS orders the bearing with insurance approval and all is well. I go in Thursday morning to drop off the car and the conversation goes roughly as follows. I say, hey there, uh, here's the keys. Now, if it's not actually what you think it is or there's more, please call me right away. I'll call the insurance adjuster and get it approved since this is the only time I don't need my car for transporting my child. Uh, no worries, I'm positive it's what I think it is. But if not, I'll call. I head out of town, have a great weekend, and there's no call from DS. Monday morning comes around and I'm about to pick up my car when I get a phone call from my adjuster. He tells me he just got off the phone with DS and he was informed that no work was done on my car all weekend. I was livid. I asked why and the insurance adjuster said he didn't know and to head down there and talk to the guy myself. So I did that. I walked into the shop and dinged the bell. He walked into the office and said, can I help you? As if he didn't even know who I was. The following conversation took place. Yeah, my insurance guy tells me that you didn't touch my car. What the heck happened? Well, it was the right front, not right rear bearing like I thought, so I couldn't do work since the right front wasn't approved. But I asked you to call me if it wasn't what you thought it was, and you said you would. Why didn't you call? Well, who's paying for this, you or your insurance? That doesn't matter, I asked you to call so I could get it approved while I was out of town. Why didn't you call me? I don't have to answer to you. It wasn't the approved work. I didn't do it. End of story. Why didn't you call? I could have gotten it approved, like I said, before I left for out of town. DS turns around, grabs my key off the counter behind him, hands them to me and says, Take your keys, take your car, I'm done dealing with you. I walked out, angry and I went across the street to his manager's office and asked to speak to the manager. They were on vacation until Wednesday. I left my number and asked the manager to call me. In the meantime, I get car to the original mechanic who starts bearing repairs on all four tires, approved by insurance as they were sorry for the DS shop experience. He also noticed that the Dillweed shop used the wrong strut in my car when he replaced the engine cradle and that they didn't put the rivets back in the plastic wheel well liner, causing the tire to burn a hole through it, 
which insurance approved replacing both with the correct parts. The manager finally calls me at 4.45pm on Wednesday after apparently being busy all day doing payroll. I say, so do you know anything about why I'm calling you? Uh, no clue. What's going on? I begin to explain what happened when I returned from out of town, and then add that the strut was wrong and the liner was ruined. He interrupts me. He couldn't have ruined the liner by replacing the cradle. Oh, so you do know who I am and what actually happened. I'd never mentioned the engine cradle up until that point in the call. Well, I'll apologize for wasting your time, but I don't know what else you want me to do. Sorry. And he just hangs up. So here was my revenge. You remember that trip out of town? Well, on my return trip, I was bumped off my original flight, then bumped from that flight to the one that finally took me home. I got on the plane, found my seat, put in my headphones and started to settle in. Now, mind you, I was out of town for a party and I was wearing a themed onesie. A gentleman in a business suit sits down next to me. I'm naturally an outgoing person, so I strike up a conversation. Hi, are you going to destination for business or pleasure? He says, business. All right, what do you do? I'm the regional vice president for ABC Repair Company. My eyes got huge. It was destiny. So I begin to tell him my current experience up to me leaving for out of town. The a-hole manager at his shop to the DS jerk they were subletting business to. The vice president was taking notes of my entire story. I swear his jaw was on the tray table. He was furious. He gave me his personal cell and email and told me he'd be having a talk with the manager. He also had his company pay for five more days for rental car since they ordered a used cradle and not a new one, which the a-hole manager decided and didn't even ask my adjuster or me, which wasted five days. The next afternoon, after I picked up my car and had that experience, I got a call from VP. He wanted to make sure that my car was fixed and that he also found out there were more complaints about his manager who'd treated me so poorly. The manager was hiding the complaints and they never reached corporate, so he was fired. I then told him about my experience that morning with the guy not doing any work on the car while I was gone. That made him angry too. He said he'd be in touch. After I talked to the DS manager on Wednesday, I called VP back and told him what happened. He said thank you for the information and then hung up. About a month later, I had a question for VP not related to any of this, so I called him up and I learned that they'd stopped giving work to the Dillweed shop and when the owner of Dillweed shop found out why, he had fired both the DS mechanic and the DS manager. So that's my story, I hope you all enjoyed. Moral, don't be a D-bag. Be honest and you won't get bit by karma. In short, accident in my car has to go to a shop I don't know instead of my mechanic because of the kind of damage. The new shop was super rude, I struck gold on the flight home, and three rude people end up getting fired. Am I the jerk? Is this the first story I've read where we've read from the perspective of one of the individuals demanding to speak to the manager? And honestly, in this one case, the demand seemed pretty well-founded. They continually gave you subpar service and just stuck their hands over their ears when you pointed out the huge shortcomings in their service. You don't have to pretend that you like your job all the time, folks, but if you behave like this, you at least don't get to make a surprised Pikachu face when you're eventually canned. I have to say that your insurance seems quicker and more effective than literally any company that I've ever worked with, so props to you for that. And even with all their help, you needed to go directly over everyone's head to the VP of the ABC Repair Company to get basic accountability from their associated shops. I wonder what was in it for the manager who was covering up the mechanic's screw-ups. Were they friends, or could he just really not be bothered finding a replacement? I guess we'll never know. If you like Am I the Jerk, you're probably going to love Am I the Genius. Check it out, linked below. Also, go to amithejerk.com slash submit if you would like to submit your own stories. Enjoy your fiery trip to the bathroom. My friend told me this story a few days ago, and I just got around to typing it up here. See, he works at a Thai restaurant in a certain city in Asia. Southeast Asia, to be precise. One day, while he was on his shift, a customer came and sat at the table. My friend was a waiter, so he served him and took his order. All should be fine, except the customer was very rude and entitled. He had ordered a few dishes, and one was pad Thai, which he wanted spicy. My friend warned him that it was already spicy, but he insisted and said, I ordered it so I can take the heat, you frickin' idiot. Of course, my friend kept his cool and put on his customer service smile and took the order to the point of service system. In the description from the pad tie, he put extra spicy 17 times and a little note for the kitchen which read, 
make him regret being born. A few minutes when all of his food was done, my friend happily served him his food, which the customer greets by saying, it's about time, you are so slow, work faster, which my friend has just smiled at him for. Ten minutes into his meal, he ordered a few glasses of iced water, but the heat was still burning inside his mouth, to which my friend held a grin when he passed by his table. He didn't finish his food, got up, paid, and ran out the door, while my friend said, have a nice day to him as he bolted out. Too far? Am I the jerk? Huh, I wonder if he tipped. I'm just kidding, he almost certainly didn't. Not the jerk. This guy effed around and found out. You make one very specific request and insult your waitstaff? They could just find a way to honor the letter, but not the spirit of the law. Enjoy your flaming butthole, jerk customer. Also, color the narrator surprised that pad thai is a spicy dish? I've eaten it a whole bunch, including in Thailand, and I just kind of assumed it wasn't that spicy. So either my spice tolerance is really good, or the cooks were automatically white spicing it when they saw me come into every place ever. The amount of other Southeast Asian dishes I've had that were hot as heck would suggest the latter. Moral of the story, guys, do not mess with hospitality workers. Cheat on me and no one goes on vacation. My ex and I used to go to a Cancun resort every year with a bunch of our mutual friends. I found out that my ex was cheating on me when I accidentally got a flight confirmation email that he'd booked tickets for himself and the other girl. It was rough. I tried to have a civil breakup, but he refused to pay me for the Cancun vacation that I'd already prepaid for. I tried to get my money back, but he refused. After our breakup, it took several weeks to find a new place to live and move my things out of his house. On the last trip to his house, I asked him one last time for the money, and he again refused. So I accidentally packed his current passport in my last box of things and left my expired passport in its place. Since he had already booked the tickets, he apparently didn't check the passport until he was at the airport and was denied the international flight because he didn't have a current passport. I never did get the money, but I did get immense satisfaction that he didn't get to go on vacation with this woman. Update, I gave the passport back a couple of weeks later when I discovered it in a box of things to unpack. So weird, right? He asked for a refund for the flights and I told him I'd be happy to if he refunded me for the resort, which was much more expensive. Surprisingly, he declined. Yeah, I'm all in favor of amicable breakups, even when they've behaved awfully up until that point. Because why commit too much energy to hating on someone? However, when they don't even have the human decency to pay you back for something like this that you paid for him to go on, and that he still intended to enjoy anyway? Goodwill expired, mother fricker. And then he has the nerve to ask for his money back. Yeah, nah, get screwed, you absolute jerk. Being cold enough to just switch your mistress in with the person you cheated with on a romantic getaway that the former partner paid for is just such a clear way of demonstrating that he had zero consideration for your feelings. So why on earth would one do anything for him? The very least he could have done was paid you back for the cost of the resort that he was using. I don't work here, but I want to. I'm a server at a local family-owned hotel, which is renowned in our community for its service and food. Just yesterday, this happened to me. I was one of two staff serving for a wake, a celebration for a person's life held after their funeral. This was an easy job. All we had to do was go around and pick up trash while occasionally switching out a bowl of salad dressing for a full one, and as such, there were long periods without anything to do. I was standing by the door during one such period, keeping a lookout for anything that needed my help and telling the occasional guest where the bathroom or bar was. Then comes up this little girl, only about eight or nine, holding the tongs backwards so that she can't actually grab anything from the food tray. I came up beside her and gently asked if she needs any help, to which she happily agrees. I grab a plate and then she told me what she wanted as I served her food. She thanked me and went on her way. Cut forward about an hour and I've been away from the party doing side work behind the house. I go back in to look for any trash to pick up, which eventually leads me to the drink table. And what do I see when I get there? That same little girl I helped and her friend running up to me with big bright smiles on their faces. We've been serving everyone drinks and we're getting tips too. I stopped working at that point. I didn't need to. They and the two kids they later roped in had it all covered. Instead, I spent the rest of the time chatting with them, giving them pointers and telling them about my job. The little girl even said that she wanted to be a server like me one day. Her friend wanted to be a lawyer. Eventually, the adults had to shut them down, saying that they were making a mess. I went back to cleaning and they eventually left, 
but not before coming to find me and giving me the $3.33 and change that they'd collected. They told me I deserved it for working so hard. <laughs> I hardly worked because of you little squirts. To little Ella and Christian, I truly hope that you find the same joy and fulfillment in your future careers that people like you bring me in mine. Honestly, awesome kids. Maybe you set them off on a long and fulfilling catering career. I think it would contribute to a very strange mood at a wake to see two small children with massive grins plastered on their faces, charging people for lemonades. Depending on the good nature of the rest of the family, it would either be a mood lifter or seen as kind of inappropriate. On the whole, as someone who thinks that whenever possible these festivities should be a celebration of someone's life, I do approve. I hope they weren't serving alcoholic bevies, though. I feel like you could get into all sorts of trouble for letting them help out with those. I don't know if we can even call the adults who stopped the kids jerks, their hearts were probably in the right place as well. Even if it was up to the restaurant staff to say if they were making too much of a mess. Entitled Mother Tries to Ban Me From A Public Library It was the summer of 2016, me, my little sister, and my cool cousin were bored as hell. So we decided to go to the public library. It's not that far, we could reach there in five minutes on foot. The library is my favorite place. It had everything. Novels, comics, you name it. But before we read, we need to write our name at the front desk. The form had the records of books that you read, and you need a membership card for that. We were reading books, my cousin was reading something about science, little sister something about space, and me, Harry Potter books. We're reading in the special room. This room is only for special members, and we had this membership for three months. The room is awesome, with comfortable seats and bunches of board games to play. And then in come the entitled mother and her awful kid. The mother is heading to the special room, and I was like, oh god, oh frick, in my head. She had the Karen haircut, and it scares me. She gets inside and shouted, not so loud, get out. Me and the others were absolutely shocked. Excuse me? You heard me. Get out. Why? What did we do? Just get out, you nerd. You see, the room isn't that big, and the seats only fit four people. And there's a play area behind the seats where you can play the board games. I said to her, what if we don't leave? She huffed and headed to the register counter. She was complaining about us to the librarian. Then this lady and the librarian came to us. Librarian said, I've got a complaint from this lady that you were harassing her to not get in, and said that if she got in, you'd beat her up. Is this true? My little sister protested, What? No. My cousin was just, What? And I said, No, that's not true at all. She was shouting at us to get out. The librarian turns to the lady, Is this true? Uh, n no, they're lying. The librarian sighed. Okay, can all of you get out so we can solve this problem? So we all trailed out. The librarian points at the lady first. So, what happened? And she tells a bunch of BS and said that we were threatening her. The librarian turns to us. Okay, what about all of you? What happened? I said, this lady came into the room and shouted at us to get out and... The kid interrupts me. Mom, can we get in? Yes, let's go. And they just walk into the room. The librarian didn't do crap. But she asks us, can you continue? And I told her everything. Okay, I'll check the CCTV first. The entitled mother was smirking at us from the room. I smirk at her too. She doesn't care and lets her kids play. After three minutes, the librarian goes to the room. Mom, I'm going to have to ask you to leave. What? Why? What you said was false. I've checked the CCTV and what the kids says is true. No, I'll not. I've paid money for this special membership and this is how you treat me? Mom, please. I'll expose this place so no one will come here again. She and her kid get out of there. The librarian apologized to us. Me and the others continued to read in the room. The librarian said that they'll both be banned for two months. I still go to the library to this day and I've never seen that awful woman again. Hopefully you enjoyed this story. Well, I don't actually know what part of the world the story took place in, but regardless, I don't see what this awful woman thought she could possibly accomplish by complaining. Presumably the library was a city institution and you'd have to have some pretty serious allegations to get them looked into. Then again, she did demonstrate a willingness to use bald-faced lies to accomplish what she wanted. So maybe she had planned to go all out and say that the fine custodians of the book palace had murdered one of her immediate family in cold blood. Lucky the place has good CCTV. 
Color me surprised that one of these entitled parents would ever be in a library, though. Maybe she just wanted to distract her kid with the toys in that room while she looked at the movie section. As a sidebar, why did these people always claim that the other party just attacked them out of nowhere in order to get what they want? I really don't understand how they see themselves in a positive light given how they behave. Way to set an example for your young child, lady. Don't be like this, folks. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications. Put the playlist on in the background to finish listening to all the stories. Or if you want to check out some great music, check out easymode.com. If you like Am I the Jerk, give Am I the Genius a shot. Everything linked in the description.